All right, how many of these do I really need? So if you guys follow me on social media, which I highly recommend by the way, I won't blow up your feed, I never post about politics, and occasionally I'm even slightly humorous. But if you follow me over there, you'll know that in the past week I have started going through a major gear purge. Um, just have too much photo gear, yes it is a thing, you can have too much photography equipment. So I needed to clear out some space, there's cameras I didn't use anymore, and I may be trying to earn some money to buy a once in a lifetime new piece of camera gear. Uh, don't judge me, you all do that too, you know you do it. But I'm selling all this old gear, and one thing I've thought about selling is my Shin Hao. Now right off the bat, a few people advised me against that. Uh, for starters, they think that the Intrepid that I just bought is not gonna be rugged enough to hold up. I have no worries about that, I think it'll be fine. Um, secondly, they're worried that the Intrepid is actually too light, that if I get in windy conditions, it's not going to be very stable. I don't shoot in wind. The long exposures I normally take make wind a no-go, and I always weight my tripod down anyway, so I'm not concerned about that. I guess practically the only reason I could justify keeping it is if I had to have an image with that required rear camera movements. And I do use rear camera movements fairly frequently, but going back and looking at all the images I've made, I don't think there's been one that I've had to have rear camera movements. Furthermore, these cameras sell new for about $1,000. And then the use condition mine is in, I could maybe get $700 out of it. So practically, there's no real reason to keep it. I could make a little bit of money out of it. And yet I cannot bring myself to sell this camera or to even list it for sale right now. Now contrast that with one of the 5D Mark III's that I sold. Now this is a camera that I have taken more pictures with than any other camera I own. Um, it's pretty much the perfect camera, good autofocus, excellent picture quality, a great camera. Had no problem selling it, sold it within a day. Didn't bat an eye, and yet I cannot list this old wooden camera for sale. And I started thinking about, you know, why can't I list it for sale? I've talked before about the camera is just a tool. And if that's the case, then why can't I just get rid of this tool that I've used in the past? And to answer that, I think you gotta look kind of toward my friend Ben Horn. Now, if you didn't notice, Ben has been on a journey this year to destroy every single camera that he owns. And he's been quite successful at that. When he damaged his ebony, which I think is gonna be repairable by the way, but when he damaged that, I sent him a message on Twitter saying that this getting broken is just another chapter in the camera story. Um, the camera had basically become a character in, uh, in the videos that he's done and this was just a, uh, another story in that character's life. And I started thinking about that with my own camera. Like, I take these cameras on trips with me sometimes uh, sometimes pretty, pretty extensive trips. I spend a lot of time with it, and in its own way, it's become a, a character that goes along with me. It's, uh, it kind of has its own personality, or if you want to get really, really silly about it, I guess you could say it has a soul to it. I mean, things like even when I open up the bellows, when I open up the rear standard, the bellows kind of crinkle as they open, and that familiar sound uh, I hear it over and over and it's become kind of, uh, it's silly to say, but it, it's soothing. When I hear that sound, I know that, hey, I'm about to, about to make an image. And when I'm not using the camera, I store it away in this, um, like one of those big Tupperware containers. And when it's been stored for a while, I take it out, it's got a, a familiar smell to it as well. So you've got these cameras that are engaging all of your senses and it really does. I, again, I know it sounds silly, but they've got personality to them. Um, furthermore, they're a struggle to use and that sounds kind of counterintuitive. It's difficult to use, which makes me like it even, even more. Again, going back to the 5D that I just sold, as I was boxing it up to ship to the guy, I realized I had never even opened the, uh, the owner's manual to the camera. But uh, in that field, how I was using it, that's a good thing. To be able to pick up a new camera, be able to use it immediately, that's good. Um, 
but at the same time, it makes digital easy. Now, don't hear me saying that as it's easy to be a good photographer if you have a good digital camera. We all know that's not true. But if you just want to take a well-exposed, um, well-focused image, I mean, all you have to do is hold it up, click, and then click again, done. You've, your, your composition may be terrible, but you will get, the majority of the time, perfect focus and, uh, and good exposure. Compare that to a large format camera, you know, there's so many things that have to go right. You have to load film right, make sure it doesn't shift in the film holder, and you have to, uh, you know, meter. You don't have a built-in meter. You have to judge your shutter speed. You have to sometimes wait for perfect windy conditions or windy conditions to stop. So all these struggles um, kind of add to the character of the camera, and they definitely add to your appreciation of a good image. Again, going back to my trip to Zion this year, I at this point consider myself to be a fairly experienced um, film photographer, a large format photographer, and still I made a, a rookie mistake. I pulled the dark slide before uh, closing the shutter down after composing and focusing. So you always have to respect the medium. Um, Unlike with digital, you have immediate feedback. You know, you take an image, you see what you've got. With, with large format, you're always having to think about these things that have to go right. And I think that struggle really, again, as I said before, it makes you appreciate your images more. And that's not even taking into account the weight of the camera, the lugging it long on, uh, on these long trips. All of that... Uh, all of that combined has really given this uh, this camera, like I said, a personality, and it's tough to get rid of that. I think uh, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll notice, or you'll remember that story where I breathed through my mouth and fogged up the ground glass, and uh, thinking that I was missing focus, I think I took like uh, probably 10 shots trying to get perfect focus when really it was just me breathing out of my mouth. And I was so frustrated at the time. Uh, it was just really kind of put a sickening feeling in my stomach about shooting film. But after that, after I made it through that, <laughs> made it through, that's dramatic. Um, after we survived that harrowing experience and I came out with a good image, I appreciated it so much. So again, this just, it, it goes to building the character of the camera, and that's why it's hard to get rid of. One final thought. Um, I've got a, uh, my grandfather right now is going through failing health, and my mother and I were at his house the other day, and we were talking about, you know, some of the things that um, when he passes away, maybe that she would want to keep, and uh, we, we started talking about are there things of my mom and dad that I would want to keep when one day they're gone, hopefully way in the future? And I was thinking about really, I don't know if it's a generational thing, but I'm just not that interested in um, material objects for remembering a person. And I think that may be generational. I, I think I've read a story about how uh, the millennial generation, I'm 35, but I think that millennial generation is more about experiences rather than objects. But as I was thinking about that, if there was one object that I would want somebody to have to remember me when I'm gone, it would probably be that camera. Again, I just feel uh, so silly. I feel a connection to it. So it's going to be really, really hard for me to get rid of it. I may still do it, um, but it's going to be a tough choice. So what do you guys think? Do you think that there's more... Uh, personality, more character in film cameras versus digital, or am I just being completely, am I completely out in left field? Uh, that was to my right. Am I completely out in left field uh, thinking that? would love to know your thoughts. Leave a comment down below about uh, film cameras versus digital cameras in general. Is one easier to sell uh, or not? And also, should I even sell the Shin Hao? Uh, I'm, I'm taking, taking advice on that. That's all I've got, guys. Thanks for watching. Give me a like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.